Project Energia Baron would like to present Dijonets, a Sanatorium in Decay. Founded in 1932 by Dr. Joseph Dijonet, the sanatorium that he built was originally intended to be a private pay option, separate from the state-supported Western State Hospital. The Dijonet Center flourished during the 1930s, and in 1938, only six years after opening, the facility was more than doubled in size. Existing as a private facility was indeed a successful route for the hospital. It was maintained as an entirely self-supporting institution during its lifetime as Dr. Dijonet's sanatorium. In 1975, however, it was converted into a state-supported children's mental health facility and was renamed the Dijonet Center for Human Development. Extensive renovations were completed, and an entirely new central lobby and open cafeteria were constructed to finally unite the two original buildings into one unified complex. In 1981, emergency admissions were inaugurated, and year-round services were provided for hundreds of children and adolescents from many parts of Virginia. 1982 brought the closure of the Children's Unit of Western State Hospital and the bulk of that program subsequently moved into the 5-4 facility that at that time comprised Dijonets. In 1996, the original Dijonets Center for Human Development was closed and a completely new facility was constructed. In the decade that has passed since being shuttered, the original halls of Dr. Dijonets Sanitarium have fallen into grave disrepair, and it makes one wonder, why has such a historic structure not been preserved or converted for other uses? The answer is simple, asbestos. The insulating material was used throughout the interior of the building, and rehabilitating it would be a massive undertaking with no conceivable potential for profit. However, perhaps the apathy towards maintaining the namesake of Joseph Dieternet runs deeper than finances. Indeed, the structure possesses an eerie legacy Many sterilization procedures were performed in its basement, and a vast majority of those were against the will of the patients involved. Compulsory sterilization was a movement within the world of psychiatry during the early 20th century, and laws in a multitude of American states permitted such medical procedures well into the 1970s. According to Daniel Kells, nearly 65,000 individuals in 33 different American states were surgically sterilized during the 20th century. The Supreme Court, in the case of Buck v. Bell, had maintained the legality of eugenics in 1927 with a vote of 8 to 1. The center of that case had been Carrie Buck, a young woman from Charlottesville, Virginia, who was the first victim of a 1924 statute which had allowed for negative eugenics, the attempt of improving the human race by eliminating so-called defectives from the genetic pool. Dr. DeJarnett, then superintendent of Western State Hospital, was at the forefront of several previous efforts to clear legislative hurdles in Virginia. When these had failed, he vented his malice towards those members of the Virginia Assembly who had prevented sterilization from going beyond committee level by stating, quote unquote, when they voted it against it, I really felt they ought to have been sterilized as unfit. Thus, the role of Dr. DeJarnett in the field of psychiatry is one of mixed colors, and the buildings bearing his name continue their inexorable decline. Since 2003, Project Energia Baron has been diligent in documenting the ongoing process of decay on the DeJarnett campus. While salvaging it would be a thrilling undertaking, we more likely suspect that it will endure perhaps another decade's worth of vandalism until it finally falls to the drumbeat of suburban progress and is demolished once and for all.